Welcome to Accelerize Presents. I'm Pete Guayarello, and I'm here with Dave Lahorak. Hi, Dave. Hey, Pete. So today we are going to continue our series of four of the Microsoft System Center Service Manager Console. This is part four. We are going to cover user roles and settings in this point. And remember, you can learn more about Service Manager implementation and training at Accelerize.com. Okay, Dave. Hey, thanks, Pete. So, user roles. What's a user role? Well, you know over in Active Directory you've got your users and groups. Well, those have to map to something, some role in uh, Service Manager. Um, similarly, over in Active Directory and Config Man uh, and, and Ops Man, you've got users and our, our computers and uh, servers and printers, etc. Well, they have to um, map to workloads, etc., and work that can be done in, ser in Service Manager. Very simply, it's like a verb and an object. There's things you can do, that's the verb part. You can add, move, change, delete, view. Uh, and then there's the things you can do them to. So you can uh, do them to this set of servers, this set of computers. And the user role is a combination of those verbs, those, those, those rights, those accesses, to uh, objects. Things like computers and users and workflow items, uh, incidents. So, so what you want to do is you want to match um, user roles to the work that needs to be done, to the, one of the things that need to be uh, have that work done to them. It sounds complicated, but it's pretty simple. Said another way, you want people to be able to just see their stuff. Uh, if I'm an exchange administrator, I just want to be able to do these certain sorts of operations only on exchange computers. I only want to see incidents related to exchange computers. I don't need to see the stuff that's for the, for the printer service uh, support guys. So a user role is a way of, of granting those permissions. That screen that I just showed you uh, shows the user roles that are default in out of the box in uh, Service Manager. These here. Okay. So uh, when we go in, we can also uh, modify user roles. We can define user roles, uh, move new user roles up, um, and uh, that's and when you do, you look at these things. There's a general uh, tab in the user role. It says generally what the, what the user role is, um, and then we want to have a granular, granularity to what they have access to. So queues are for work items, right? Work items are things like instance problems changes. So you can associate a user role with a specific type of work item, like just incidents or just changes. And then you can have fine grain. Can they just view changes? Can they view and modify changes? Can they delete changes? You, you get the picture. That's what a user role does. So uh, queues are for work items, and groups are for configuration items. So to these servers, just these computers in this region. So you can assign a user role and get fine-grained uh, access to specific work items or specific configuration items through these uh, configuration panels. Then we have tasks, things they can go do. These are the things that show up in these right-hand panels when you're in the console. So can, can you do this task? Can you ping a computer? Can you reject a review activity? Well, you can if you're granted the right in your user role. So you can see a user role is a very important um, uh, way of assigning uh, rights in Service Manager. There's also views. Uh, user roles have access to certain kinds of views. If you don't have access to it, it won't show up in your console. Um, that's a way of showing you just what you need to see, as well as form templates. So can you get to the standard change request? Can you modify the standard change request? Uh, can you delete the standard change request? Well, you can if you have the right user role. For example, administrator, as you might expect, is a high-end user role. And service manager. And then, who are these users that are associated with this user role? Well, you, you define that here. This is the Active Directory group or user who is assigned this role in service manager. Lastly, in this segment, we'll cover settings. Pete? Okay, settings are just some of the global settings uh, for work items and uh, knowledge management. Um, for example, in change management, you can set in this area the prefix for change records. The default is CR. The default for incident is IR. You can change that if you'd like. Uh, you can also set things like the number of file attachments and the maximum size of those attachments if you want to limit the number of attachments. Or conversely, if you want to allow a large number of attachments, um, you set that here. And then you can also set retention time which is the, the amount of time that something is going to remain available in the database to work on. Uh, the default for changes, for example, is 365 days. 
after that time, it's only available for reporting. So all of those sorts of settings are handled here under the settings menu.